Hello all, so we thought we'd do another video for you today. Um, today we are going to be using our balloon stamp, our splish splash stamp, we've got the forget me not and the encircle stencil, so let's get started. So here's the balloons, so you get four stamps on there, you get one large bunch, a set of three, and then the two small individual ones with tags on, hang on, let's take this off, that might help, there we go two smaller ones with the um, little tags to write a message on. We've also got Forget Me Not, we're actually only using the Happy Birthday off here. We've also got Never To Be Forgotten on there in a nice font and Just Because, a tiny little Just Because, because we always like to send those kinds of cards. And then our new Splish Splash as well, so you've got the Water Splash here and the individual circle stamps on the top here. We're using the End Circle stencil we're also using our um, Honeydew Craft Sticky Glue, which comes in the two sizes. It comes in the 120ml or the 30ml. We have also got um, the Honeydew Crafts Crystal Clear Embossing Powder and the Onyx Black Versafine. We're using clean colour pens. Now, it looks like quite a large amount today, um, but use what you've got. You don't have to use clean colour pens if you want to colour it with something else, feel free to do so. So we've got the Wink of Stella brush here, which is just the clear one, so it gives us a little bit of sparkle. Um, and then the clean colour pens in, here we go, light pink, Persian green, orange, yellow green, it's my new favourite. That's a new colour we've just added into our collection. Blue, light violet, wine red, violet, pale green, yellow, light blue, lemon yellow, and last but not least, pink. So that's the clean colour pens we're using. Um, and then in Distress Oxides, we are using quite a collection today. So we've got eight colours. We have got wilted violet, mustard seed, Picked Raspberry, Carved Pumpkin, Twisted Citron, Mermaid Lagoon, Squeezed Lemonade, and Festive Berries. So let's move these out of the way. You're going to see my arms going in and out like a yo-yo on this today. I'm sorry, but the card involves lots of different um, inks and using different, the same stamp with different colours, so lots of moving around. Also, we're pleased to say we finally have our foam pads back in stock. So they're a 1,600 um, foam pads, individual foam pads on here. Two, 25 millimeters by 25 millimeter by two millimeters thick. So 25, two and a half centimeters square. Um, so they're now back in stock on our website as well. So let's get started. The card stock sizes today are an eight by eight card. And then we've got a seven and a half inch layer in black. A seven and a quarter inch layer white then we have a four and a half by five and three sorry four and a quarter by five and three quarter inch square in black and then a piece of white colored cardstock and that's four by five and a half so it just gives us that quarter of an inch border all the way around so we're going to get started with the larger white piece first of all, which is our background. So we will clear this screen and give you the whole thing. Lucky you, hey. So we're just going to take the sponge from our mustard seed and I'm not going to add any extra ink to it, just the sponge as it is. And I'm just going to go around and lightly, and I'm going to try and avoid making a straight line. So I'm going to go further in on some of it. I'm going to come right in close to the edge on the other parts and just add some detail in here. It doesn't have to be beautiful. It doesn't have to be perfect. Try not to move it once you start. Unless you're going to pick up and move your um, stencil again. Because I'm moving it around a lot, that's why, and I'm, that's why I'm freehanding it. I'm not using the board or the tape or anything because I am literally picking it up and moving it around wherever I want it to be. Now we're getting a little bit of a straight line going there so we're going to try and 
change that. Come in a little bit over here maybe. Just to add some interest around the edge. It is really subtle, not really in your face. I'm hoping that that looks better on a normal screen. The light really is bouncing off the cardstock here today. Bear with me a second, let me see if I can change that a little bit. Maybe that will help. Um, so there we go. So that's all I'm going to be doing with the stencil. So I'm going to pop that out of the way. Then we're going to take our splish splash stamp. And I'm going to just pop my mustard seed back on the top there so it doesn't get lost. And with the squeeze lemonade, I'm just going to ink this stamp up. Now, I'm not going to use this as a whole stamp. I'm just going to use parts of it. Just to add some interest in around the edges of the card again. It's just building the layers up, making it a little bit more interesting than just being a plain flat piece of cardstock. You don't have to use, you don't have to even go all the way around the edge. You might just want to put a couple of pieces in a couple of places. You might not even want to do this at all. But I quite like the finish of this. I like layering up the stencils, the stamps, and incorporating it all. It just shows that everything works together. So I think that's probably all I want on that one on there. I'm just going to wipe my mat down because where I've stamped off the page, it's going to spread like wildfire and dry that off. Just wipe off my stamp really quickly because I'm going to be using it with a different colour in a little while. So. Now this one's a bit of a pig to clean if I'm really honest, so I do tend to just tap it because otherwise it gets caught on all the little, because there's so many tiny little pieces there. So um, I do tend to just tap over the top of that to get that clean. Right, now we're going to go in and put our balloons. So I'm going to use the three smaller sets of the balloons, so the two individual ones and the set of three, to build the background up using all of these colours. So we're going to start with the pink, where I always start, don't I? I nearly dropped that. Did you see that? It's going to get messy, isn't it? So I've got pink all over my nails. So we'll ink this up. I'm going to apologise now. Again, my dog may very well make an appearance in this show, <laughs> as they say. She's, um, I can hear her tip tapping in the fort, in the entrance hall. So we've got um laminate floor down there, so she can, you can hear her toddling around. So if you hear her, I apologise. She's just getting bored. That pink didn't want to, doesn't want to stay wherever I'm putting it today. I've just splashed that tip that ink all up on the wrong place, all over the pins. So that's the start and we'll just wipe this off. I'm going to let you into a secret. This is the second time I filmed this one today because I did the whole thing with the list of what we're using on and you couldn't see anything I'd done. So that was fun. <laughs> Good job I like this card, hey. So I'm now going to go in and may maybe we'll use it just one more with the, the bigger stamp and you can they don't always have to go the same way you'll notice also I'm concentrating on the outside edge because we're going to put that block in the middle so you don't need to worry too much about the inside um, but I also do like the color to come through um, poke out from underneath and stuff as well so don't make it don't completely ignore your center Right, so some Mermaid Lagoon now. Where should we go with this one? Let's come in here, I think. Just pick up where I've gone off. I've got too much going on on my desk. That's my problem. Too much in my way. <laughs> Trying to show you all what we're doing, and I'm sure you can manage without seeing all the perfect colours every time. Um, I will bring them back in so that you can see as we're going along. Now I also like to just have a little bit of the tag just hanging off the edge sometimes as well. I think they're quite cute little tags swinging from the ceiling there. Uh, so let's try chop over to another colour. We've done pink, we've done blue. Let's have a little bit of festive berries I think. We'll go in with another stamp. Right, 
right, where are we going to go with this one? Here. Wherever it lands, it shall be. Again, I'm just going to take that tag up the top there. Right, we've done. Da, da, da. Let's have some wilted violets coming in now. And we're just building up and making a nice bright card. And as I said, don't forget about, don't worry about the middle too much, but don't completely forget about it because we do want some little bits poking underneath. Look, this is what I mean. So you can kind of just see a little bit of the balloon coming out of the edge there. If you're not sure, I actually think that balloon's going to get completely covered, having just done that. So I'm actually going to pop one right on the edge there too. So if that makes sense, you can see it like that then. And just work out where everything sits comfortably. I'm going to pop in some twisted citron. And then I think... We're almost there. I do try and avoid them um, overlapping if I can, but if they do overlap, it doesn't really matter. It's not a biggie. I still think it needs some more colour on this side, so I think I'm going to go in with a bit of the blue. We'll chop over to this blue again. I'm going to bring some more blue in here because it's a little bit... The Twisted Citron's taken that colour down a bit, which it doesn't often do, but it has this time. So will just go there, and then I want something up here, and I'm going to go with some pink up there. Just to have that balloon poking out the top. And this, that balloon will just poke out from underneath. So I think that's pretty much it. I um, don't think we need to add any more balloons in there. I think we've covered all the colours. I'm just going to quickly pop that on there and make sure I'm happy with how it all looks. Not down on this corner. That pink got lost. It's a bit low. I just put on there but this bottom corner doesn't look quite right either so I'm going to go in there with another pink balloon and I'm going to take this one mm, can't go pink there because we're already pink there we'll put some pink on the tag at the top there and maybe pop a blue balloon in there see look this is how it all works you get going Put it together just test things don't just assume that what you've done is where it's going to stay because it's not always how it works so i think that one might be yeah it just pokes out of there so that pink one remember that i put on there thinking it was going to pop that side a bit and now see i think i need to put an orange in there <laughs> we'll get there in a minute i promise I've still got that under there. I'm going to pop that in there and I'm going to use the tag up there. That's it. I'm walking away, ladies and gentlemen. I'm walking away from it. Step away from the ink, Samantha. So that's the oxides done. So I'm going to get those out of my way so we've got space to work. I've seen another spot that we put another one in, but I'm not going to. I'm going to walk away. Do you know, I can't walk away. I've got to put that orange in there. <laughs> see? We're not all perfect. There. See? Now that's what it needed. I'm happy now. So that's all the little stamps done. So we won't be using any more of the smaller ones on this part. So if you want to clear those out of your way, go for it. 
just going to dry that off and then I'm going to pop this onto my white, my black layer and pop my layer onto the card, I think, so that we are they're out of the way. So we just pop these on here. These are our big foam pads that you just that I just told you about. And then they are super, super sticky, so I'm just gonna pop some of our glue on the back which allows me a little bit of wiggle room to, to position them where I want them to be and to make sure that they're on there and straight. Don't have to put loads on, but just enough to keep it wet for a couple of minutes. And we're gonna flip this, line this up hopefully. See what I mean? I needed a little bit. Oh, that one was really bad. I'm trying really hard not to put my head in the camera, that's why, you see. So we'll just pat that all down. And then we're going to stick our background onto the card. And then our three pieces become one. No, you lose one piece then, and if you lose the card, we're in trouble, aren't we? Okay. So I'm going to stick that. So that just pop that to one side out of the way. We're now going to work on our watercolor piece. So we're going to take the smoother of the two pieces. Oh, sorry, the smoother of the two sides, not the two pieces. You're only using one. And then we've got our Versify and Onyx Black, and we're going to ink up our stamp. But before that, I'm going to just undo the lid of the embossing powder. As I've said to you all previously before. The Versafine Onyx Black and the embossing powder are not the best of friends, so you have to be quite quick. The Versafine is a fast drying ink. You need to be quite quick to get that ink onto your, um, onto your image, onto your, to get the embossing powder onto your ink. So we'll do that and press really hard, and hopefully that that will soak into your watercolor card lift and then get your powder on there as quickly as you can and once the powder's on there there's no panic we'll then put the excess back in and remember just a light tap don't give it a really good flick just a little light tap takes the excess off but leaves what you need to on the stamped image right then we are going to ink this stamp up this is the happy birthday now notice i haven't heat embossed this one yet but we're just going to get the sentiment in here as well at the same time and heat it all together. It makes it easier to get the sentiment on because obviously when you heat the card, um, it does warp it slightly. Um, so this helps to get your sentiment on fairly straight, she says and hopes. Oh, I just moved that as I put that down. So it's going to be straight-ish. your excess off again. There we go. And pop this back in the card, in, in the pot. So now we're going to heat emboss this. It is watercolour cardstock so it takes a little bit longer to heat um, because it's so thick so bear with me. I'm heating from underneath so it puts a barrier between the, the pressure of the heat gun and the powder on this ink because as I've said it doesn't particularly like to stick to this type of ink, so bear with me a second.
one heat embossed stamped image. Now I'm just going to give it a bit of a wiggle while it's still warm to try and flatten that cardstock out as much as possible. And now we're going to go in with some fun and doing some colouring to fill these in. So we'll take our pens and we're just going to colour these in. So bear with me a few minutes. So we're going to go with the pink and the light pink to start with. Now we've embossed this, so I'm going to go in on the where the embossing is and the ink will kind of sit on the top there a little bit. Then I'm going to take the lighter colour and in circular motions pull that darker colour across. Once I get to where I want it to be at the strong at the darkest of points, I'm going to make sure I've got no more of that dark ink on my brush and then I'm just going to continue to blend across and that means that we'll see the difference in the two colours. Um, which one should we go with next? Should we try red? Red with some light pink, I think. So this is the wine red, and we're going to use that with the light pink as well. So the same thing. I'm just going to go across here, and then I'm going to take my pale pink and pull that colour out. Get so far that I'm happy with it. And then take the red off my brush and continue to blend out to the pink. So hopefully that will make sense. So you'll end up with something like this. And we could just keep going with all the different colours until you're happy with those. So again, same thing, and I do try and work with the same colour, so it's like the light's coming from one side, um, so they go darker to light all in the same direction. So this one is the Persian green and the, is it Persian green? Yeah, Persian green and the light blue. Same thing, take the excess off so that we come in and finish on the pale, really pale colour. I'd quite like a little bit more of that darker colour there, so I'm going to go back on the top and just pull some more of that dark out. And I do do this in circular motions because it just seems to be much more successful. And keep going over until you're happy with the blend. I'm just going to dab that because we were getting a bit too much ink on the top there. So there we have Persian blue, green, sorry, into pale blue. What should we do next? Let's do, should we do some orange and yellow to make this card pop. So we're gonna go in with some orange across here. And then take the yellow and pull that orange across. I mean, you've got it to this color that you like, Here's my little scratch piece of kitchen and I just go over it and then go back in and blend it through to the yellow. There we go. And again, I'm just going to blot that because we're getting a bit too much ink there. Make sure before you put these all back away that you have put your, cleaned your, your lighter colour down to its natural to its proper colour before you put the lid back on. So this is a blue and we're going to go into light blue. Clean my brush off and come back in. Oh, it doesn't want to blend in there. Look. trying to take it past that line there because I don't want that to look like it's a cut off on the balloon. I'm just going to take that across a bit more. So there we go. Now this little balloon in the background here, you can't really do, there's not much space there. So I'm just going to go in with this colour and this one is our yellow green and this one's a new one to our collection. Um, and it just works really well just to make, see how that suddenly pops? Can you see that? How it just suddenly, just popping that in there just makes the whole thing just stand out a bit more. So we're now going to do, this is 
uh, lilac and light, no it's not at all, it's violet and light violet. So we're going to go in again across the dark there and then take the light violet and pull that colour out and then clean my brush and bring it back down to the lightest of colours. I want a bit more dark in there, we're not seeing the contrast so I'm going to scribble over the top and pull that dark out a little bit more before I go back in with the light. I'm hoping this is making sense as we're doing this. And then last but not least, we're going to use some green through to yellow. These are both quite pale colours, so this is pale green and we're going to pull that out with the yellow. This one just gives a real, really, really little light hint of the change in colour here. But it's quite cute, I quite like it. Now we've gone over the top of all of those, um, which is over the top of embossing powder. So I am going to blot this just because the excess ink will sit on the top of those, on where the embossing powder is, it, it will resist it. See how much color came off there just by doing that. And now I'm gonna go in with my Winker Stella and make them all sparkly. You have to work quite quickly with the Winker Stella because it is like the other brushes, it will, blend the colours so it, I'm not spending a long time on it, I'm just picking up, literally scribbling over the top. I think my wrinkle cell is getting to the end of its life. I have had it for years and years and years. They last forever these brushes. I just want some sparkle in there. Oh, didn't clean it off properly before I went in there. Hopefully, yeah, we can blend that out. There we go. Got a bit carried away with myself there. So there we go, there's our balloons coloured in, ready to go. I'm then gonna take my splish splash stamp again. My goodness, we're at 27 minutes already. We are nearly there, I promise people. So we'll be getting bored. So we've got the splish splash stamp and I'm just gonna pick up across the edges here. I don't really want huge amounts of any of it. I just thought it had a little bit of interest in here. Come down there, look. Just to make it look a little bit different. Instead of it being a square, boring, or rectangular, boring white space. And pop that off to one side. So we're now gonna layer this section up. Pop this one on top of here. Again, I'm gonna pop some foam pads on just because it give it a little bit of lift. If you wanted, I suppose, with this one, you could also decoupage the actual balloons and make those 3 d as well if you wanted to. I think we'd be here too long if I was doing that for a video, but I think it would look quite nice. And again, I'm going to give myself a little bit of wiggle room with the glue. I need my glue to come out faster than it's prepared to do at this moment in time. So we're going to give it a good old squeeze. We're nearly there, ladies and gentlemen. Nearly there. So we'll layer this up. That's because I'm trying to do it without putting my head in the camera. It's going to give me a problem, isn't it? Just because it can. So there we go. And then we're going to top this onto here, like so. Just going to do this with some glue. Middle 
There we go. So there is our finished card. Fab birthday card for anybody, I'm sure. Anybody would enjoy receiving that one. So quickly run over what we've used again. So we have used the Encircle Stencil Splish Splash Stamp. Forget me not stamp for the sentiment for the happy birthday because it's got a nice little split in that one. Um, and then our balloon stamp. Distress oxides, we have used squeeze lemonade, twisted citron, mustard seed, wilted violet, picked raspberry, festive berries, pumpkin seed, and mermaid. Pumpkin seed is not right, it's carved pumpkin and Mermaid Lagoon. We've also used Onyx Black Versifying Crystal Clear Embossing Powder. Wink of Stella Pen. Blimey, this list is long today. And then a selection of clean colour pens. Um, if you want the list of what colours we've used, email me and I'll quite happily send you that list. You don't want me to reel these all off to you. Um, so let's give you a couple of ideas on some other cards that have been made with this. So this one's just using the balloon set again been coloured with pens and then um, the thank you stamp that we have. Another lovely one done by Marianne. She's done this one and she's decoupaged all of these balloons. As I say, it does look really effective when they've been decoupaged. This one's just all been done in one colour, which I think looks really clever. And then it's been um, had crystal clear embossing powder over the top. So it's completely clear, but shiny. You can't really see that one there. Um, another one, this has got a splish splash in the background that's been stamped and embossed with white embossing powder. And then the balloons have been decoupaged over the top. And then a couple using the splish splash. That's just splish splash randomly all over and um, the hello stamp. And then this is the circles that are on the top of the splish splash stamp just put all together to make this lovely, lovely card that really pops. Um, so I think doesn't want to that's the bit I needed there we go so I think that's pretty much everything um, I could quickly just show you our finished card one more time just so that you can see that up close before I oh, wrong direction I'm trying to get it straight so you can see it take this off here there we go you can see it up close now so that's the card we finished today all using predominantly the balloon stamp uh, if anybody's got any questions or would like to know anything about what we've done, please feel free to give me a call or, or you can email us on honeydewcrafts at gmail.com. Um, can't wait to get my hair cut in a couple of weeks. <laughs> um, I think that's everything for today. Uh, we will be doing a Facebook Live in the next couple of weeks showing you our next lot of releases for Honeydew Crafts. And um, that's everything. Have a lovely afternoon. Speak to you all soon. Bye.